But at a very high level, the things that we're going to be looking at are this capacity. So just to kind of write it out, there's a capacity. And then this other part is how long we're going to keep things in the cache. So we can actually control both of these things. And that means that the entries in the cache will expire. So I have that set to be three seconds. And what we can do now is actually go to the browser and see that we have more control over the behavior of this API. It's not just going to be every time I press enter in the browser that we're going to have this immediate response. In fact, we'll see that the data refreshes periodically. And that period is three seconds. So let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so when I go to press enter here, we should see this one take around one second. There we go, new set of data. But if I press enter again, enter again, enter again, see on that last one, it took a little bit longer and it gave us new data. So doing it again and again and again, and then now another set of data. So the way that this cache is working for us is that it's actually expiring the time after three seconds. What I'm not doing is exercising sort of this code path. So if I do three, I should have used Postman or something else to go simulate this, but you can see that as I was doing these other numbers, I don't know if I can do this fast enough, but if I tried to go back to one, one was still cached, right? It's a little bit too hard to show you in a video, but the point here is that I'm able to sort of cache these other entries. If I were to somehow go over seven in that period of time, we could actually see that we'll evict the ones that were at the beginning. That's how bit faster caching could be used if you wanted a little bit more control.